Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses RC to get kids excited about math and science. And today we're taking a look at uh, something that we found off of Craigslist. This is actually a fifth scale. Um, some will say a sixth scale, but this is a, this is a, by no means a, a small buggy. This is pretty hefty here. Um, it's uh, I think it's uh, specced out at about 40 pounds. Uh, this is called the Duratrax Fire Hammer. And uh, this is actually a, a bit of a vintage car. It came out in the mid 2000s. Uh, it's, it's no longer produced. Uh, Tower Hobby still carries some of the parts, but it actually uses a two stroke gasoline engine. So, uh, you know, a lot more, um, a lot more practical than a, a nitro engine, especially for these really large cars. They they pretty much uh, they they pretty much only come in in real gasoline two stroke. Um, so the, what the two stroke means is that you actually run this off of pump uh, gasoline, right? The stuff that you run your car off of, but you have to mix in uh, what they call a, a two stroke oil, right? So there's there's a there's some oil in there to um, you, you mix in oil with the, the actual gasoline to provide the, the engine lubrication. Uh, but these have a lot of advantages over the, over the nitro cars. Uh, you know, undoubtedly a, a gallon of gasoline is what market price is, is, you know, around $3, a little bit under $3 a gallon versus nitro fuel is, is usually about what, $40, $50 a gallon. Um, this will actually get about half an hour runtime off of a full tank. Uh, and when this truck was, or when this buggy was new, it, it costs, uh, I think retail was $899. Um, so well beyond uh, what I could afford at the time. Uh, but buying it used, I, I found this off of Craigslist. Uh, the, the, the gentleman that I bought it from actually uh, listed it as a HPI Baja. Uh, but uh, when I went to look at it, I, it, was, it was at a pretty amazing price. Uh, he actually, is a mechanical engineer himself and uh, has a whole bunch of RCs and, and was looking to to clear them out because he didn't have time to play with them anymore with uh, with a young kid. But uh, regardless, um, this is yeah, this is pretty beefy here. Um, you know, I, I I we we only have uh, electric vehicles in uh, in our fleet here, racing to learn. Um, so you know, the gasoline I, I wasn't too fond of just because. You know it's dirty, it's smelly, it's it's uh, it's cleaner than nitro, but um, you know just less greasy than nitro and and you know, less maintenance, less tuning. Nitro engines you always have to constantly uh, fiddle with uh, in terms of tuning, or sometimes you've got to tune the gasoline engines. You you um, you know you pretty much uh, you may have to tune it once, but uh, it, it it will you know it'll stay tuned right. Uh, but um, you know a couple things about this buggy. Uh, you know we were probably going to go ahead and convert this to electric, but uh, uh, not not sure if it's worth it. You know, um, actually, when this car was made in the in the mid two thousands, gas was the only option for uh, for vehicles of this size, just because of the weight, uh, the mass, uh, and battery technology. You know, people were still using nickel metal hydrides at that time. Lithium polymer batteries uh, were not widely available. Um, and uh, you know it, it was cost prohibitive, but nowadays you will see fifth scale uh, RCs with uh, you know with electric motors, right? Some people uh, some people still prefer the gas, but the you know definitely there are more gas fifth scales out there than than electrics. But uh, you know the electrics are a lot cleaner, a lot quieter, right? Uh, especially if you're in uh, in a park or whatnot, uh, the the gasoline is probably not going to fly with uh, the other attendees there at the park. Uh, but just wanted to take a look at this this buggy. Uh, they also had a monster truck based on this. I had actually never heard of the the fire hammer um, because I was out of RC. I, you know, I had moved on to full size cars in, in the uh, in the two thousands there. Uh, but uh, you know, just taking a quick look at this, it actually comes with a Futaba servos and a radio. It's an FM radio. Uh, you know, nothing nothing to write home about. You know, it's not two point four gigahertz, but uh, it's it's actually Futaba. That's that's rebranded Duratrax, you know, of course, Tower Hobbies owns Duratrax and, uh, and Futaba as well. But, uh, you know, a couple of pros and cons about this, you know, so keeping it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to keep it gas just because of the neighborhood that we live in, uh, and the parks close by, 
uh, people wouldn't wouldn't appreciate the noise, right? We'd probably get a lot of flack for the, for all the noise that the engine cr creates. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if if I'm gonna keep this or um, or go with a, an electric Baja or a, a low C five T or whatnot. Um, I've always wanted one of these large scale RCs. Uh, you know, definitely at the price point. I mean, this is around uh, you know two hundred fifty dollars used at this point. Um, you know, one of the issues too is is just serviceability and, and parts availability. Um, you know, this is a discontinued buggy. Uh, it does share parts with other fifth scales. Uh, you know, namely there were a whole bunch of um, uh, clones, or I don't know if the same manufacturer made them, but a whole bunch of these coming out of China uh, under different names, right? Uh, that shared a lot of parts. So uh, FG was the the name of the brand there. Uh, there were you know the other. I guess the other creator, I, I think uh, Carson was another name that I heard when I was just Googling for parts interchangeability. Uh, so you can find parts. Of course, fifth scale is going to be a lot more expensive parts wise just to begin with. And, you know, the rarity of the parts, you, you, I'm not going to be able to go to my, my local hobby sh shop and, and pick up parts for this, right? I'm, I'm probably going to have to get parts off of eBay or whatnot uh, to, to replace if anything breaks. Uh, just a couple things to know here. I, you know, the, the, just pros and cons. I mean, this is this is 10, 15 year old technology. Um, so, you know, some of the things you'll see here is that you know, the shocks are relatively small for fifth scale. I mean, you know, at the time they were probably considered huge, uh, but they don't have covered shock um, shock pistons, right? There's no rubber boot covering those. So, uh, just a maintenance thing and, and wear item, right? The uh, the seals and the shocks will wear out faster just because the dirt is going to directly uh, affect the seals there and uh, because there's no shock boot to protect it. Uh, you know, the differential housing, this is a pretty beefy diff and, and gears here as well, but it's completely open, right? There's no sort of enclosure here, even on the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see, this is pretty heavy again. Um, and also the, the transmission, I'm, I'm not sure why they left this gap open here in the gear cover. Uh, but you know the the back side of it isn't covered there as well. You know not a huge deal because these are pretty uh, Beefy gears, but you can actually see that there's a nick in this gear. I'm not sure if that was due to a rock getting in there um, or You know gearing probably was a rock uh, you can actually see that the paint on the uh, The shock springs too really worn down probably from all the debris being blown out uh, of the gears and whatnot and hitting hitting um you know, hitting that that shock spring right so uh, you know as far as an electric conversion goes it's it's uh, it's probably not the best start for an electric fifth scale just because it is really heavy right uh, of course the more mass that you're moving around the more energy you know the more the more motor it's going to take to to move this vehicle around right so this I've heard on the internet that it's it's like 18 or 19 pounds if you take out the motor uh, and the you know and the gas tank and everything uh, associated with the gas. Uh, but still, you know, I I don't know. I'm still kind of debating. I, I saw I saw one on eBay that was already converted to brushless. It was a roller with just the motor uh, with the electric motor uh, and the and the steering servo. So. Uh, you know, it was around the same price point, $200, two, 230 with shipping or whatnot. So, you know, definitely a, a, a cheap way to get into fifth scale, right? I mean, a lot of our vehicles cost more than that. And, um, you know, they're 10th scale and, and 8th scale vehicles. So uh, just just not, wor just not um, sure if it's worth investing in this as, as a platform because it is a pretty dated chassis. You know, the, the suspension travel um, is pretty pretty small there maybe just an inch you know front and rear right so not not a lot of travel here uh, probably okay for uh, you know just running on dirt and whatnot but it's it's probably not gonna handle the jumps too well um, so yeah let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think uh, you know whether we should keep this or not or, or uh, you know or just go to a, another platform another more widely available platform like the HPI Baja or the low C 5T, uh, you know, definitely I, I, we, we like the two wheel drives around here just because, uh, you know, easier maintenance, less maintenance, and also less parts to break in the front, especially uh, when, when uh, you know, when more inexperienced or younger folks are driving this, uh, you know, they're, they're more likely to hit something in the front. And this, this bumper uh, is definitely, um, definitely doesn't look like it can 
protect the front too much on this. So uh, there are more options with the the Baja 5B in terms of uh, aftermarket support, you know, parts, bumpers, you know, accessories, replacement parts, and whatnot. So, anyways, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, follow us on Facebook and on YouTube, and we'll see you next time.